So for those worried about like the connection between evolution and atheism, let's say, I mean, there is that trope up from the God's Not Dead movie of there's a professor with an axe to grind. Like, hey, train up your kids uh, with, I don't know, yeah, anti-evolution or intelligent design or creationist fodder, some apologetics to help them defend their faith because there are these scary professors out there that that are actively trying to undermine your children's Christian faith. Uh, pr probably cross-disciplinary, really. I mean, it's not just the science professors that we would be no. issuing words of caution. Philosophy professors, yeah, across yeah. the board. Mm -hmm. that, that want, that's the idea of floating out mm -hmm. in a lot of churches, I would say, and youth groups. That yep. People are trying to undermine your kids' faith. So equip them. Is I don't know. In your experience mm. in academia, have you have you seen that? Is that a, a genuine threat out there that we need to worry about? Well, as you mentioned, I talked in the book about a couple of my students pushing back against me, and I felt uh, very honestly embarrassed that that's who they thought I was, that I was this atheistic professor that their parents and pastors had warned them about. And since the book came out, I've had that happen again. Just last semester, a student uh, pushed back against me, always on the last day of school. Mm. <laughs> they don't want to risk their grades again. And then I and and none of them ever um, took me up on an offer to meet and talk about it. Uh, but there is hmm. definitely that fear among Christian parents, Christian students going off to college. Um, and as far as encountering other um, academics who are ac uh, antagonistic or, as you said, an axe to grind against religion, honestly, I don't think that is tremendously as prevalent as we'd be led to believe in these God's Not Dead movies and in some of the apologetics uh, literature. Now, of course, there are scientists like Richard Dawkins with a true axe to grind mm -hmm. against religion. Uh, but in my experience, these types of scientists are rare. Now, scientists may not uh, be people of faith. They may be atheists, but they don't have a problem with someone being a person of faith and a person of science. You know, interestingly, and he would probably hate this, but Dawkins and Ken Ham actually are in complete agreement in this case mm -hmm. that religion and evolution are completely incompatible. But those two are on the extremes of the scale. Mm -hmm. uh, but unfortunately, they are the two loudest voices. So they get... Uh, the most attention. And that's why I think we see this in the on TV, in, in, in these movies, uh, in, uh, you know, just in the tales that we tell our kids before they go off, that there is, that there are uh, professors who are just lying in wait to sabotage their faith at the quickest, most unexpected moment. You know, and it's it's actually no wonder that students come in like my students did with their guards up. Um, a few years ago, I took a look at some of the apologetics, some of the more popular po apologetics printing houses, and I looked specifically at the literature that they were producing for um, upcoming college students and upcoming parents of college students. And there was one brochure that was very long, very detailed, and the title of it was Welcome to the War. Mm. And so just from the very beginning, we set up what the expectation that your faith is going to be attacked. Mm -hmm. And these apologetics houses not only warned against uh, secular universities, but they said, and this was the actual term they used, that Christian universities had also been infiltrated, yep. infiltrated. with professors who it was their goal to um, destroy the faith of a student. So it's understandable that students come in with their guards up, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think in real life there is there there is that much overt antagonism, although. 
you know, absolutely there are going to be professors who are not people of faith, but that doesn't mean that they are saying that faith and science can't coexist. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, um, a pro biology professor at my alma mater and I were ha having uh, some correspondence back and forth, and he told me just this one little fact, and it's just really stuck with me. He said that when he uh, talks to his colleagues in secular universities, that he finds that his colleagues in secular universities have a really hard time convincing their Christian students about the truth of evolution. Hmm. While he, on the other hand, as a professor in a Christian university, does not have the same hard time convincing Christian students of the truth of evolution. Hmm. It's almost as if when students go into a secular university, they are assuming the professor is an atheist. And they're hmm. assuming they're going to uh, teach you evolution because it's an atheistic uh, pursuit. But this particular professor was saying his students let down their guard a bit. And they're more willing to listen to him because they know him as a Christian at a Christian university. So I found that very, um, very enlightening, very informative mm. about uh, why students throw up guards and what um, allows them to let down that guard.